Yes, hello there and welcome to the third episode of the Home Youth Music Network podcast in association with the Goodwin Development Trust and also now brand newly in association with West Hull FM. That is right, if you are listening on the FM airwaves from West Hull FM, then thank you for listening in to us. This is the Hull Youth Music Network podcast, a podcast designed to interview tell the stories and showcase up-and-coming artists within the whole youth music scene. And I've got a person with me here today who actually works at the Goodwin Development Trust on the same programme as me, and he's been absolutely killing it at the moment with his solo releases, write-ups in magazines. He's just been doing a lot of things musically-wise. It's Cameo Brooks himself. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me on. So, you do a bit of everything when it comes to rapping, releasing. Would you like to tell us a bit about what you do, where it started? Yeah, yeah. So, like, yeah, I'm, a, I'm basically, I'm a rapper. Um, I first started out writing lyrics when I was probably about 13 or 14 years old. When I was still at school, I'd uh, sit there and write my lyrics in my notebook and, and things like that. And couple of my friends used to support it and stuff and say, oh yeah, stick at it, Cameo, stick at it. So, yeah, 13, 14, when I first started writing lyrics. When, and then after I left school, I was about 17, first time I ever stepped into a recording studio. And it was um, at the Warren Centre. And I recorded my first like track with them, which was Darvinin. And that ended up being my debut release on Warren Records. So what was it like stepping into a studio for the first time? Was it a buzz? Was it quite nerve-wracking? Seeing all that equipment going on it for the first time? Yeah, I remember being, I remember being really excited about going into the studio because I've been, trying, I've been trying to get in for a couple of months before and, and they'd been fully booked up. So when I got that first day, I was really excited. But at the same time, I was nervous. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what, what was it that, that made you want to start writing bars? Have you been into music all your life or was it something that just came later on? Like that, that buzz, that hunger? Throughout, like growing up as a, as a kid, my dad's a DJ as well. And um, he used to MC at raves and parties and stuff back in the 90s. So like while I've been, while I've been growing up throughout my childhood, I've always seen my dad like producing music and stuff. I've got memories of being sat on his knee when I'm like three or four years old while he sat there producing a track. And I think when I was like 11 or 12, I started really getting into hip hop music. Um, Eminem was, was one of my big inspirations at the time. And because my mom and dad are from that 90s era, I, I was always around sort of Lauren Hill, um, Mob Deep, Tupac, all them type of artists. So. That's where my love for hip hop originally started, and on on the writing bars front, the, the, the reason that I actually started is I got I got bullied a lot when I was in school, and um, like I I was never really much of a fighter or anything. So for me, instead of getting myself into trouble and and retaliating, like music was my outlet. That was my form of therapy. That was like how I'd get my emotions onto paper. Yeah, well, I mean, it usually the case if you do stand up to a bully and thump them you're more likely to get in trouble. Yeah, exactly, man. You know, than the bully who's been, um, obviously, you know, giving you grief for months. I mean, I I sort of started writing for for the same reasons. Yeah, yeah. Um, Yeah, so so what sort of progressed on after going into the studio? So after after, after, um, I'd been in the studio and sort of done my first track, to be fair, when I first started rapping, I was doing it in American accent because I'd, I'd listened to a lot of American hip hop growing up, but I didn't realise it myself, you know. And yeah. um, it was Stuart Baxter from Warren Records who pointed it out to me and was like, yo, come here. I've noticed like you, when you're rapping, I don't know why you're doing it, but you're rapping in an American accent. Like, and I, I, didn't, I didn't notice it at first. And then when he pointed it out, I started realising it. And um, it was like, you should just rap how you talk in your whole accent. So was, after that, I started doing that. and. I got some good opportunities from having my first release on the Warren. I, I ended up going on to play in my first show at the Adelphi Club, which was actually a, a fundraiser for fibromyalgia. And it was partially being run by a project that was going on at the time called the Big Music Project. 
Wow. So, so what was it like playing a show for the first time? It must have been quite nerve wracking yeah. Go, going on stage and, you know, performing in front of people for the first time. Yeah, I, I, I was I was definitely nervous for that. I remember my dad was like, have a beer before you go on. Ease your nerves and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, get, get wrecked. <laughs> like, I, I enjoyed it. And I, I feel like for my first performance, I didn't do too bad of a job. But, you know, like stage presence wise, like I was just sort of stood still not really fully in my element like like I am now sort of thing yeah yeah so what 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 sort of progressed on did you get more shows after that more yeah. bookings yeah yeah from that um I actually got invited to to London at the time and um, because they was doing a big music project event at the Ministry of Sound Club where there was sort of showcasing talent from all over the UK and different cities so we went down to that and that there was like loads of industry professionals there there was people from global people from capital extra bbc and um i performed my debut single diving in and it was it was sort of like a networking event really where you get to go chat to all these music industry people and they give you advice and stuff and then not long after that like a couple of weeks after i performed at that gig i got a message off um this woman emily and she said oh yeah uh, I, I saw you a couple of weeks ago performing at the Ministry of Sound Club. I really enjoyed what you was doing. We've got a, another project that's going on at the moment called Capital Extra's Music Potential, which was the radio station Capital FM. And they, they was basically running like an artist development course. And she said, although like the main cities that there was pulling people from was London, Glasgow, Cardiff and Manchester, um, I was really lucky to be like the only person from Hull that was invited to be part of this sort of project that they had going on. And we, we had a couple of uh, trips out of town, got to see the Capital Extra Studios in London and got to go to Media City in Manchester where they've got radio station. And it's sort of like, we got to meet this singer Ray as well. And then the sort of summary of that was we all got to perform at Coco Theatre in London alongside um, the twin MCs and Lisa Mafia from So Solid Crew, so that 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 was like an amazing experience because I was getting to actually like perform alongside some of these people that I've been listening to growing up. You know? Yeah, and it must have been a buzz, you know, just going about and traveling as well, and yeah, really you know, was. seeing these studios and um, you know, see, seeing these these big places that that is obviously different from from here. Um, yeah, so, so what sort of pro progressed on from there? From from that point, th that's when I really started um, sort of taking my music more independently, like teaching myself about things like music production, uh, beat writing, music marketing, all the skills that you basically need as an independent artist. And from that, I, I started releasing my own my own music on Spotify and and stuff. Yeah, so from from that, basically, I I just started working independently on my own music and. Um, I got my own little recording studio, started recording songs and putting them out there. And at the time as well, I was helping out my dad with, we'd set up a record label in the city called Chakra Records. And we had like four or five rappers that we were sort of helping out, we was putting events on, we was getting them studio time and sort of helping out with the artist development and stuff. But after after COVID happened, I decided to put it on a little bit of a back burner because I, yeah. I, I sort of felt like I had to focus on my own career before I, before I carry on like helping artists in the record label field, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And so sometimes uh, helping is a good thing. Don't don't get me wrong, but sometimes you can, I think, sometimes over help, and yeah, then people definitely. will use that as an advantage yeah. to, you know, more or less so, sort of do the dirty on you and. You know, they expect things to be free all the time, and yeah, you've definitely you know. got to like allocate your time wisely and with, with this sort of stuff. And um, something else that I was in, involved in, like helping people out, is in, at the end of twenty nineteen, I was um, helping lead a documentary with Channel Four and the National Citizen Service to talk about how rap can be used as a therapy for mental health. And like, what I did with that is I went in and we had this. Um, young rapper called Womack who was about 16 at the time and he, he was suffering with sort of stage confidence and stage anxiety so I was going through this process basically helping him like overcome that fear and yeah and at the end of it we ended up performing at the Adelphi and we did a little show 
and then that went out online and and it it seems to get you know a, a good response from people like people seeing how the benefits of music can be used to help your mental health and yeah stuff. And did, did you actually go on TV when it was for Channel 4 or was you just sort of in the background? I, f I, I don't know if it actually went on the um, TV TV, but I know that it was on all four on the catch-up. Yeah, and yeah. They'd, they'd posted it on the E4 YouTube channel as well. Uh, that That's absolutely amazing. So uh, obviously you said you, you sort of started going more solo. So was that an easy thing to do? Was it hard? How, how, what's the process like getting your own stuff out there, you know, Spotify, that kind of thing? Yeah, I feel like uh, there's a lot of stuff that you've got to learn when you're first sort of going into being an independent artist. Because, <coughs> you the, like, instead of having somebody else there that's doing the work for you, you're the one that's got to source these write-ups in magazines. If you've got your own studio, you're the one that's recording and mastering and doing the mixing. You, you, you're finding it what the right distributor is to use, even just that alone, I've, like, of the past few years since I've been releasing independently, like, I've probably used three, four different distributors. I think it's just trial and error with some of, some of these ones, you know, and... Definitely. But there's, there's so, so many resources out there to learn these things. YouTube has been one of my best friends throughout my entire career because, like, if ever I've not known anything, I've, I've, I've been straight on YouTube how to take more low end off the kick or how to EQ a vocal properly or how to pitch to um, Spotify creators or magazines, you know, like you, there's a lot of research and things that you do. De definitely, I, I use YouTube a hell of a lot for things I do. Um, you know, I mean, I, I produce a lot of uh, electronic dance music, but even for that, there's there's so many videos online yeah, where, yeah. where people show you how to do things and you know i've learned things that i'd probably have never learned if i hadn't have gone on to youtube just yeah, yeah. you know so sometimes little small things that you don't think of as well and then there's just a simple video that shows you i think i've been like um experimenting on my music a little bit over this past few years as well because i've sort of gone from completely conscious material old school type hip-hop to then like D Block Europe and um, Young Ad style sort of your trap genres, and now I'm sort of elevating into this new part of my journey where it, where it's like sort of your, your your new style UK rap and drill type of music. But yeah. One thing that I've always stayed trying and stayed consistent with is like myself growing up on a council estate and in a pretty poor area, like. And I've been to a few different schools and stuff. So basically, I'm just telling people like my journey and uh, my stories. Yeah, and yeah, exactly. Sort of, sort of the everyday things that people like us and and the people around the estates and stuff like things that we go through and like the trials and tribulations. Definitely, uh, exactly. Uh, so obviously, um, you work alongside myself at, at the Goodwin Development Trust. Uh, how did this job come about? So I, I was out of work at the time. I was just solely focusing on my music, and I, um, I was looking for a for a job. Uh, I, I tried a couple of things like bar work and things like that, but I, after after because uh, maybe five or six years, I've worked a few different jobs, and I'm just at that point where you know I thought I really just want to get a job doing something that I love doing, like doing something involved in music, and so I, I, I'd um, I was at this like work convention where there was a few stalls set up and someone actually recognized me uh, from Goodwin he actually recognized me as a rapper and he, he said oh are you are you Cameo Brooks the rapper so straight away I walked over I said oh yeah I, I am yeah yeah um, and he said oh, I used to work at the I used to work at the Warren Center um, back in like 2017 I, th I think I remember you and I said oh yeah yeah you look you look familiar and stuff and he said oh, I've got this I've got this new opportunity basically I work for the Goodwin Development Trust and We've got some um, music stuff that's going on. Can I give you a call? So I said, yeah. He, he rang me up and, and told me about the job. He said, basically, we've got a role as a youth music facilitator for a new project called the Hull Youth Music Network, where we're going to be running monthly meetings, um, helping out 16 to 29 year olds with the music and trying to get feedback from them on how we can improve opportunities and music provision in the city. And 
after it, I, I was sold straight away, you know, just knowing that I was yeah, able to get a job yeah, in music. Yeah, you, you was in straight away. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so you obviously interviewed for it and then yeah, boom. And then boom, got the job, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, so so what's it been like, you know, working here and working alongside music and... I, I, to be honest, it's been it's been amazing, like, it, it, it's not only done wonders for my mental health, but, <clears throat> like actually doing something where I know that I'm helping people out it's like a big thing for me you know and like a lot of the stuff that's involved with this job regarding like graphic design um, social media management events management music facilitating like it's all stuff that I've done previously or like on, on my, by myself over the past few years so doing something like this it's really just expanding on the skills that I've got yeah yeah so it's almost like <laughs> In some sense, when you did it before, it was almost like you were training yourself for this job, yeah, yeah. but not knowing yeah, that, not that's, exactly knowing, that's yeah. what you were doing, but ca- mm. kind of like something's telling you and a, and a lot something's of these going to come of this. Yeah, definitely. And a lot of these like skills as well, like <clears throat> although they're transferable, they're not really usable in a normal workplace, you know? No. So, like, the fact that I'm able to work as a youth music facilitator at Goodwin, at, like, I think it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, it is a, an amazing job to be in. So, uh, what what other releases have you had um, since obviously that first one? And you know, where whereabouts can we look for this this music? So, um, my mo- I'll probably talk about my most recent release. Um, I had a song come out a few weeks ago called Hungry, and um, that's been doing amazingly well. I feel really humbled by the response that I've had from people. I've had. I sent it out to over 250 people in the music industry and I've had um, positive feedback back from the likes of DWE, Recky, Twin MCs and Boontown Festival and it's had a few write-ups as well in UK Hip Hop Talk, Grid Magazine and The Word Is Bond and, and they're basically just highlighting that, um, saying that it's, an, it's a really, really good sounding track in the cinematic drill soundscape and that my lyrics are talking about the story that I'm telling and that I'm, I've got the hunger and the ambition for it more than I ever have and I'm willing to keep going for it despite what the naysayers might think so <clears throat> that's that's my latest release that's been doing quite well you can find it on Spotify Apple Music and all the major streaming and download platforms you can also find it on amazingradio.com um, and at the moment I'm just sort of I've got a couple of releases lined up I'm still in the studio working on more music so how, how often do you tend to release songs? Is there so long that you let sort of one track have its moment and then release the next one? Or, you know, do you have like a period where a few sort of come out at once? I, f- I feel like it, it really depends on sort of what I'm thinking about and feeling at the time with my music. Because, like, I've had two releases this year. I've had Burnout and I've had Hungry. Before that, I didn't actually re- release any music for about a year. I just felt like I needed to take a little bit of a hiatus and a break from from the constant grind of, of pushing your music every day for like five years. It, it, it sort of got on top of me and my mindset wasn't in the right place at the time. So, <clears throat> but, so I didn't release any music for like a year. And then my first release this year was Burnout and like that's, that's at that point it was like, yeah, my, my mindset's back. I've spent the last year just not releasing any music, but, you know, just writing lyrics yeah. for myself, really, if anything. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and and do you ever do any, like, um, like rapping videos, you know, just little short, sort of, like, maybe just a minute long that just goes on social? Yeah. Sometimes. You know, like, previewing bars, or maybe you've just wrote something quick and you think it sounds all right, and, you yeah, know, some... here, what do you think of this? Yeah, sometimes I'll, uh, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll, like record a little freestyle video on my phone or something and I'll stick it out on like Instagram and Facebook reels yeah, and yeah. stuff like that but I like I try to I try to release music really every two or three months I like I give the last track a little bit of a chance to sort of play out with people and then get used to it and everything and then boom hit them with the next one yeah uh, is, is TikTok something that, that you explore and use because I've I don't use it myself, but I've had people that have posted me on there, like rapping and, you know, the views and the response have actually always gone quite well. Yeah, do you know what? 
I, I do upload to TikTok because like when when I'm uploading what you were saying, like freestyle videos like that, I'll put it on all them platforms. Like I'll put it on the Instagram, the Facebook, the Snapchat, Spotlight, and TikTok as well. But uh, TikTok's something I know over at I still say this as well, but I'm struggling with at the moment because trying to get them out, trying to crack them algorithms, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, 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 uh, de definitely. Um, so, yeah, um, we'll finish off with some 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 sort of questions. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I ask this to, to everybody that, that comes on the show, and not one person yet has been able to, to fully answer this without sort of having to think. Um, what is your most favourite song of, of all time? It throws everyone <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah, no wonder, man. The favourite song of all time. Do you know, I, oh, I don't know if I could think of a favourite song, but I can think of my top five favourite artists right now. Yeah, I mean, I if, if you want to list them, go, like, go ahead. Benny Banks is probably one of, in, in my top five. Um, Ardad, Drake, Dappy, and Joyner Lucas. I'd say they're probably my top five rappers at the moment. Is there any reasons for it? Is there something about each one that, that draws you to them? That, you know, that they do different apart? Yeah, I feel like I feel like Joyner's in my top five, Joyner Lucas, because he's an absolute genius when it comes to the music industry. So, like, I just think it's really cool how, how he navigates through. Um, Benny Banks, Adads, um, Drake and... Was the other one that I said, Dappy? Yeah, yeah I, I rate all them lot for the music and the the consistency. Like each one of them have been at it for over ten years, you know. And yeah, and the, and still going strong. Yeah, still going strong. Still releasing and grinding and uh, writing. Um, what what advice would you give to any sort of young up and coming rapper who's maybe just starting out? I'd say, pr well, I mean. If you're a rapper, you're probably doing this already, but make sure you're working on your lyrics every single day. And you know what? Like, have, have a good have a good team of, of friends and, and a family around you that support you, you know? Getting your mindset right. Always on the path to self-education and learning more. Like, don't be afraid of rejection because it, it happens to everyone. And at some point, there's going to be somebody out there that listens to you and that wants to give you an opportunity, so... Just keep writing your music, man. Yeah, do, do you agree with that sort of grinding for five years like you did? You yeah. think that, that that was a good thing? Yeah. Although it did maybe burn you out a bit. Yeah, I, I feel I feel like with, with any of these, like a lot of big artists that you see and stuff, a majority of them have been around for a long time and they've been putting music out before they blew up, you know, for, for a few years. Like You get some artists where it is lucky or they have had someone out in the music industry and they're able to just go viral straight away which or just go viral on social media which is possible for anyone nowadays but I feel like the ones that stand the test of time are the ones that have been hustling for years you know yeah yeah definitely people that have um, been, been grinding and, and what tips would you give um, sort of promotion wise to to any sort of up and comer you know trying to sort of get themselves out there and, and let people see what they can do yeah I'd say get yourself some high quality photos man and and try doing if you're not getting any gig opportunities try hitting up some from promoters go to some open mic nights network with some people you know like on 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 your social media and stuff when you're promoting just make sure that you're being genuine and like have a look at what these other artists are doing to promote because you don't have to copy it but the, like when you're looking at some of the things that they do like it's a recipe that works yeah, yeah. W w would you still say the, the physical promotions there? So, you know, going out to events itself or... Yeah, know? definitely. I, I, even with all this age of social media and stuff, I still feel like the power of word of mouth is, is amazing. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. I mean, uh, events-wise, you know, seeing posters in, in takeaways, bus shelters, it's definitely still a good thing, you know? Yeah, Because there's that many things I, I think that, that go online and you know not just music and events but you know funny videos it, it's quite easy to scroll past something yeah definitely you know so whereas you know if you're in a takeaway or a bus shelter I mean a takeaway sometimes you're waiting for food for ages and it can be quite a boring time so 
you are sort of drawn to look at yeah, the wall and, and stuff, you know yeah. see what's on it um yeah mo most definitely um and what would you give sort sort of advice wise to someone who's doing a show for the first time preparation wise sort of being at the show uh i'd say make sure that you rehearse your lyrics don't worry if you mess up too much like if, if you miss out a bar or a couple of bars and then you jump back on you, you're gonna notice because you know your track but majority of the people in the audience won't even have a clue you know that they're, they're just gonna they're just gonna think that you're performing and that you're doing a good thing so like rehearse practice don't overthink it uh, some of that helps me when I when I do shows as past few gigs that I've done to help with my anxiety and, and nerves I've, I've had my hat and I've had my sunglasses on so everything is just dark, you know, and I don't yeah. have to like see the crowd. Yeah, I know when I do anything mic wise on stage, sometimes I tend to close my eyes. Yeah. Um, you know, not not necessarily in an ignorant way to the crowd, but it's like I'm I'm just feeling the music and I'm in yeah, the moment. Hyper focused and that. Yeah, know. yeah, definitely at the time. Um, are you one of these sort of bring your own microphones or, you know, use a venues or. Generally, I'll just use a, a venues, but I, I have got a favourite microphone. Um, I've used it when I've been doing stuff with the Beats bus at like Humber Street Session, things like that. So, do you know them um, them wireless Shaw mics? Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I them, do. Man. I know them quite well. Um, yeah, I know, obviously, with the COVID, quite a few venues sort of said, you know, bring your own microphones. Yeah, yeah. You know, with, with everything that's going on. Um, well, thank you for coming on anyway. Uh, this has been the whole Youth Music Network podcast episode three. If you are tuning in on the airwaves of West Hull FM, there will be some music coming your way, so make sure to stay tuned for that. Um, make sure to follow West Hull FM at www.westhullfm.co.uk. Make sure to follow the Youth Arts Takeover on Facebook. Uh, follow them on Instagram. Also follow the Whole Youth Music Network on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, make sure to follow Goodwin Development Trust as well. You'll never miss anything that is going on, monthly events, music lab sessions that take place every single Tuesday where you can come down, you know, get involved, be sort of in your own band, plan events, maybe learn to play the guitar or play an instrument, just get involved with yourself. Um, and some other people and just get their jamming and it'll just hopefully help you get out there a little bit more i've been ashley noble we will see you all again on the fourth episode of the whole youth music network podcast have a good day and thanks for listening also if you want to follow me you can catch me on instagram and facebook at cameo raps thank you